Hey, welcome back to the Farewell North devlog. If you're not familiar, Farewell North is a game about restoring color to the world, and in this one I'm going to show you the most important feature to date, which is the ability to pet the dog, and how I use procedural animation to make this happen. So just about every time I've posted about Farewell North online, I've received the question, can you pet the dog? It's a little bit of a tricky one to answer, because in Farewell North you actually play as the dog, and I didn't really want like a pet me button, because that just seems weird, but I wanted to make this work somehow, because it's been asked about so many times. So up until now, the only time that there was any petting was in this placeholder intro sequence, and I really want to stress that this is placeholder. The girl walks up to the dog and kind of pets him, but the animation has all kinds of problems. You can see that the animation's not very natural. Her feet are going through the ground, the left arm is just dangling. The way she's petting doesn't really show any love, she's very far away. So this has always been a placeholder and it's time to come back to it. Now that I know that I want to have dynamic in-game petting where the player and the dog can be at all different types of positions, this is going to become much more complicated. But luckily, procedural animation is going to make it possible. Just before we get started though, don't forget to go wishlist the game on Steam. It doesn't cost you anything, it just lets Steam know that there's an audience for the game and it truly helps me out a lot. Alright, let's get started. Alright, so the first thing to do is to scrap the placeholder petting animation. I don't think it's something that I could really build off of, so I decided to just start from scratch. So what I did is I went to Mixamo and I grabbed this kneeling animation, and essentially what I'll do is I'll use procedural animation or animation rigging to move the arms out in to make contact with the dog and turn this into an actual petting animation. So this kneel here is going to become the pet animation you saw at the very beginning of the video. So just a quick primer on how 3D animation works if you're not familiar, because it's going to be important for understanding what I'm doing. You generally have two main ingredients, which is the rig or the bone structure, which you'll see is that the blue kind of bone structure that you see here. And then you have the mesh, which is the skin and the clothing and everything that you want to actually render visible in the game. So when you have an animation, you're essentially just moving the bones to certain key poses on each frame, and then you're rendering the skin on top of that, right? And then you, you change it every frame, and that's what creates the animation. This is all well and good if you have static positioning, or you just want to say, go here and run the animation. But if you want something more dynamic, you need to have more flexibility. So this is when procedural animation comes into play. So the idea is that you're going to run the pre-built animation, and then you're going to apply layers of constraints on top of that with data that can only be known at runtime. So for instance here, I'm using something called inverse kinematics to move the girl's hands to the dog's chest and back, which couldn't be known at the time of the animation being created. They can only really be known at runtime, right? Because the position of the dog could be variable. So procedural animation is really powerful, but it's not perfect and it's hard to get natural looking movements with this. So you can see here, her arms are very rigid. They're not moving in a natural way. Her torso is quite hunched over, like the posture isn't, isn't quite right and her feet are still going through the ground, and you're also going to notice her right hand is, is essentially bent in on itself. So there's a bunch of work that needs to be done. So first off, what I want to do is I want to fix the, the torso. This posture doesn't look very nice. Um, it's very unnatural. So what I want to do is apply another constraint to the chest and to the head to have her kind of twist to look at the dog. I think this is going to give more of like a loving pose, and it's also going to fix this awkward posture. Next thing to do would be the the kind of uh, rigidity of the arm, so apply some smoothing to this animation. You can see that red ball kind of floating there, that's called a hint, and the idea of that is it gives the animation a hint as to where the elbow should be pointing. So I need to play with that a little bit to give the elbow a more natural pose. I need to bring her in a little bit closer so that her arms aren't so, so straight and rigid, there's a little bit more bend into them. And of course her feet are still going through the ground, so there's a lot of work left to go. But this is basically just the first pass, and you can see that it's you know, the kneel animation is now a petting animation. It's not good yet, but it's, it's on the way there. So in order to fix the awkward posture, what I'm going to do is apply another layer of procedural animation using what's known as an aim constraint. Essentially, an aim constraint is similar to the way that the girl's hands are going to move to a dynamic position during runtime. The aim constraint is going to have her look and twist her torso and head to look at a position, uh, again, that's not known until runtime. So what I'm doing here is I'm rigging up the aim constraint and I'm applying it as a constraint before the hand position. So essentially what's going to happen is the game is going to play the animation, it's then going to apply the constraint of where she should be looking, and it's then going to apply the constraint of where her hands should be. So you build these layers of constraints that run in order, which will just allow you to build more complex and natural movements. So once this is set up, you can essentially have the character look at any position in world space. So when she's petting the dog, she's going to be looking at the dog's head. When she's you know, running around, she'll be looking at objects of interest, and it'll move in a pretty natural way. This is a really important part of building natural and realistic looking animations, especially for humanoid characters. So with this out of the way, the next thing to do is align her feet to the ground so that she's not always clipping through the world. That's easier said than done though, and it was pretty difficult to get this working right. So 
So as you can see, it was a bit of a tricky process to get this working properly. It does actually work, but I used a little bit of grass to mask the imperfections, just because this, this cutscene is one of the first things the player is going to see, so I don't want them noticing any obvious little clipping issues like that. So now we have a full pet animation, and you can see it's actually looking quite natural. So she bends down, her arms have a good bend to them, her posture looks good, she's looking at the dog, and her feet aren't obviously clipping through the world. So I think this is looking quite good, and it's time to move on. So one of the benefits to setting up all this procedural animation is able to improve some of the animations I had elsewhere in the game. So you can see here, before I had this push animation where she isn't really making contact with the gate, I was able to apply the same system to improve this and have her hands always actually stick to the gate and move with it as she pushes it. So you can see here this animation when the gate is locked, when there's no color, she pushes and she's not able to move it. And when the color is restored, she's able to push it and as she does, her, her hands actually move with the gate. So it looks much better. So now that we have some procedural animation applied to the girl, it's time to do the same for the dog. The purpose of the girl petting the dog is to kind of show the relationship and the bond between the two characters, and that should be going both ways. So one thing I want is for the dog to actually be looking up at the girl, um, not just when he's being pet, but anytime she's really close by. So in order to do this, what I actually did was apply a similar aim constraint to the dog as I do to the girl. Um, this time it's a little bit more focused in the neck than, is, than into the chest, as dogs turn more with their necks than humans do. And then at runtime, I essentially apply a weight to this constraint based on the distance of the girl to the dog. So the closer she is, the higher the weight becomes, and the more the dog looks at her. As she goes further away, or as the dog's doing his own thing, the weight comes down, and he's paying less attention to her and more attention to what he's doing. And so you can see here, the dog's now able to look at basically any position in world space, and he'll turn accordingly. So because of the weighting system I've applied to this, the dog looks at her much more as she's close by. So right now she's standing right beside him and he's looking up at her. And the idea is to really emphasize the bond between the characters. But when he then runs off and he's doing his own thing, he's not paying attention to her anymore. He's paying attention on what he's doing. And as she approaches again, he looks back up. So because the weight is based on proximity, when she's petting him, it's actually at its highest weight and he's looking up at her most, which is great because it gives a loving feel where he's actually receiving this pet and he's acknowledging it. And then as she walks away, he kind of watches her as she goes, and the weight decreases, and he kind of goes back to his own, his own thing. So now that we have petting in the cinematic sequence, that's all well and good, but I want it to be actually in the game as well. So I had an idea to incorporate this with the targeting system. Right now, when you want the girl to interact with something, you bark at it, and she kind of goes there. But if there's no target, then she just says something like, I don't see anything. But it's not really in a natural interaction. That's not really how you would behave if, you're bark if your dog is barking at nothing. So I had the idea to change that behavior to basically have her just look in the direction of where you're barking and say her line about not seeing anything, but then to also apply a cooldown to the interaction. So if you bark a second time within the cooldown period, she'll, instead of looking in the direction of where you're barking, she'll then look at the dog and basically pet the dog and kind of embrace him and be like, you know, what are you doing? Why are you barking? That kind of thing. I feel like that's a much more natural and much more in line with what you would actually do as a pet owner, as opposed to like running over to where they're barking and then turning back at the dog, and, and it's, it's just not a very natural interaction. So it's pretty easy to get this working because the procedural animation is already set up. So you can see here he barks, she says there's nothing there. He barks a second time and she comes over and she kind of pets him and says that he's being silly. Um, and I feel like this is much more in line with what a pet owner actually does. So that's it guys, that's the answer to the, to the age-old question, can you pet the dog? Um, so now we have petting in the opening cinematic sequence. Right? And we also have petting in the actual gameplay, which is a little bit more player controlled without going so far as having a button that just says pet me, which I think is like a, a bit of a, I don't know, I, I don't feel like that would be very fun or wouldn't really have anything to do with the gameplay, it would just be an arbitrary button. This way it kind of actually fits in with the, with the main gameplay of the game, um, and I think it gives, it gives weight to the relationship between the two characters, so it kind of works on a lot of levels. Let me know what you think, though. Uh, let me know if you think anything can be improved. I think this is, you know, as with everything that I post on the devlog, these are always things that are going to take some, um, some time and some adjustments to really get perfect. But I'm pretty happy with how the system's coming along. If you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. Please consider liking and subscribing to the channel on YouTube. It really would help out a lot. And if you really like the look of the game, consider wishlisting on Steam. It means the world to me. In any case, though, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.